Your enjoyment is enhanced when you remove the fear of self-destruction. With a heavy meal, your body's going to send blood to your stomach to digest, and it won't be in your brain where you need it. Today we're going to talk about how to play long sessions on purpose. Cash players usually have the luxury of just standing up whenever we feel like it. Uh -huh. But if you're a tournament player, your butt's kind of glued to the seat yeah. until you run out of chips and they make you leave. Right. <laughs> you have no choice in the matter. Right. right. So you might have an 8, 10, or maybe even a 12-hour day as a tournament player, mm -hmm. and you're used to that. But cash players, we just kind of go like, I'm not having any fun, right. or I'm tired, or I leave. We can quit. But you may decide for well, reasons. Yeah. I mean, let's say you only play on the one day a week on the weekends, right? and you've got 12 hours to play, and you know you're going to play 12 hours, and that's that. So that's what we're going to talk about today, is not should you be playing so long. Right. If we're just assuming that you want to play a long time. How do you maintain your A game through the whole thing? Tommy, what's your longest session? My longest session, I think it's uh, 40 hours, which I've done several times. <laughs> and I've played over 20 hours. I'm getting Probably. sleepy just thinking of it. I've not yet begun to defile myself. But ask how long it's since it's been since I did. Okay. Long, long time. <laughs> okay. I think my longest is like 12, <laughs> yeah. maybe 14. But now, yeah. Yeah, now I consider a full day, six hours, is like right. a full day of poker there for There you me. go. So, but anyway, that's not what we're talking about. No. We're talking about how to maintain equilibrium and how you can prepare. Exactly. And let's just start there. So do you do anything special to prepare for a session? Yeah, if I decide I'm going to play a long time, I try to really get trained. Mm -hmm. I will try to do some exercise in the morning. Going for a run mm, is yeah. one of my, you know, that's, that's huge. I always feel much better. Right. There's actually an emotional component. Like, I sit down and I go, like, I went for a run. You yeah. guys didn't. Exactly. I'm yeah. already, I'm ahead of the game. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Diet, as you're going into the game, mm -hmm. super important. You don't want to weigh yourself down with a heavy meal. Right. Carbs in yeah, particular. Carbs in particular. They will make you drowsier than non-carbs. That's, that's a fact. But also, with a heavy meal, your body's going to send blood to your stomach to uh -huh. digest, and it won't be in your brain where you need it. And my head, I'd be scratching while my thoughts were busy hatching if I only had a brain. It's a game of stamina. Mm -hmm. Who's going to be fit at the end, like the fourth quarter of a football game? Right. You actually need to have way more stamina than you actually need to complete the game. That's the ideal state, right. is that you're still feeling good at the end of the session. Right. You know, tournaments or cash game or whatever. I think the most important thing for a successful long session is resetting during the session. Mm -hmm. Lee was talking earlier about sleep and diet. You know, make sure you get a good night's sleep. Don't overeat carbs. When guys write to me, they'll say like, hey, I'm playing a big multi-table tournament. You know, three-day event. I need a tune-up. You know, right. talk to me. What can I do to get ready for this event? Right. And I always say the same thing. Do the things that you can control. Right. You can't control who you're going to play against, how they're going to play, what table you're at, nothing. Right. You can control what you eat, mm -hmm. you can control how you sleep, and you can control your ability to reset during the game right. with whatever you use. Right. And, and that really is the most important thing. You become aware when you're a little bit physically weak, a little bit tired, and then you have tools and things to do at that time to bring your back up yeah. to your A mindset. What you typically want to try to do is put yourself back where you were when you got there, right after your run, right. after your shower, after you're feeling good, right? Mm -hmm. Well, you know you're not going to feel that way eight hours from right. now, but what can you do to make it most likely that you will feel that way? And I think the, the main thing is to reset during the game, which means when you lose a couple pots, mm -hmm. check in with yourself. Oh, right. Yes. I'm a little fractured right now. I don't feel really good right now. What am I going to do? Well, I'm going to... get out of the context of the game. Mm -hmm. And it's just a question of how far out of the context of the game you need to get. Stepping outside, breathing fresh air. If you walk down the block to 7-Eleven and get coffee, uh -huh. just like 
so many things reset. You become aware of the traffic, you become aware of the fresh air. You're in the 7-Eleven and the poker game is the last thing on your mind, which is exactly yeah. what you need. And it turns out, at least at the Oaks, you can get to 7-Eleven and back <laughs> well within one orbit. <laughs> there you go. So you get up at your big blind. Right. You go, you walk down the street, you get your coffee or your Chinese food. Right. And then you come back uh -huh. and you have completely reset, even yeah. in ways that you weren't even aware of. Clap along if you feel like that's what you want to do. Is you don't want to wait till you're not feeling good. Right. You get in the habit of taking breaks whether you're ahead or behind, mm -hmm. and then it'll be easier to take the breaks when you're behind and you're feeling a little bit yes. fidgety about the situation. Yes. I think you once said that uh, poker players <laughs> are real good at walking away. It's the standing up that we suck at. No when to walk away, walk away, walk away. The thing I love about it is the confidence yes. that I have. Yes. You know, you talk about enjoyment. Your enjoyment is enhanced when you remove the fear of self-destruction. Mm -hmm. Yes. So going in, you're like, hey, this is going to be a, another good session because right. I've done all these things. Win or lose, by the way. Right. The objective is to feel as good when you leave as when you got there. Win or lose, by the way. Mm -hmm. that's, that's hard to pull off, right. but that is the target to aim at. <laughs> Thank you. One thing that you can do if you don't trust yourself to be aware of slipping is set a timer. Uh -huh. You know, we have a timer running right now to tell us how long <laughs> the video is going, right? right. <laughs> you can set the same timer on your phone, uh -huh. and after two hours, it beeps at you. Yep. All you have to do is listen to that beep. Yep. And just and get, get up. up. One thing I like to think about is the psychological part of the game and mm -hmm. to predict how things are going to be going five or six or seven, eight hours down the road. Okay. Right? So what that means is you plan ahead for the situations when you're winning and you're kind of in control of the situation. But more importantly, you plan ahead for the times when you've just been card dead, you've been flat. Let's say you're stuck a couple buy-ins. Mm -hmm. You're six hours into the game. Right. You don't really have much good table mojo because you've right. been losing. Right. How can you develop a psychological advantage or maintain your psychological advantage mm -hmm. over those opponents in that state? Right. I think this is one of the most important things to playing successful long session is don't think to yourself, oh my God, I'm stuck, I gotta get even. Right. We all know that's right. a dangerous right. mindset. Sure. What you wanna do is maintain your composure. Whatever it is in your composure and your behavior that you think creates an advantage for you psychologically, mm -hmm. you just gotta keep doing those things even when you're stuck. Right. And I found that if you can play a really super solid, tight pre-flop game and not look flustered when you're right. stuck, that actually has an extra psychological advantage on people because they're like, what's up with this guy? Right. Nothing flusters right. him. Yeah, right. And you can actually have a psychological advantage over your opponents even when you're stuck and losing based on how you comport yourself. And when it comes to resetting during mm -hmm. the game, um, you know, I had a guy write to me one time and he said, what if I could take a shower before every poker decision? Right. I don't think I would ever tilt. If we could reset constantly, mm -hmm. we wouldn't. I think the best thing anyone can do to reset, even if you're not a hardcore meditator, is just to sit up, when you think of it during the game, just sit up straight. Yeah. This is good. And just, you don't even have to close your eyes. <laughs> right. But just one little breath like that, especially if you get in the habit of doing it, it's unbelievable how much tension that can release. And, and don't think of yourself as like some big meditator at the table. Just think of it as just a logical little way yes. to just calm down. Bring yourself a little bit of peace and quiet. And if you just do that now and then, it's just one more little thing that's going to add to the longevity of your I've agent. started doing that, and I certainly don't do it on every hand, mm -hmm. but on every hand that I do do it, mm -hmm. I just feel, oh, 
yeah. incrementally that much better. And what yeah. that means is you will stay that much better shape until your next real break when you get outside or whatever it is. One thing that you could try is changing tables. Mm, because in many ways, changing the table puts you in a brand new poker game. And yep. you go, oh, I don't know any of these people. Yep. They don't know I'm stuck. Right, oh, that's huge. Right, and now I have to do all the work to reevaluate the table, yeah. evaluate the good players, the bad players, all that other yep. stuff. And that gets your brain back into a healthy, positive, forward-thinking mindset. Yeah. Oh, that's a, one of the best pieces of advice is changing tables. Right. Because you get to start all over. Like you said, mm -hmm. they don't know you're stuck. I used to go as far as changing casinos. Like I'm sure. You know, I'd be at Lucky Chances, playing 2040. There's only one table. I don't like how it's going. It's like, screw it. I'm just going to drive down Artichoke Joe's. Okay. And the drive and everything. You know, Tommy, one thing about long sessions is, is if you're at the table with somebody else who's playing a long session, uh -huh. you may begin to develop a relationship, as it were, yeah. with that person. Yeah. And you can be setting up long cons if you have four, six, eight, ten hours yeah. with the same player. Absolutely. That's another thing to be thinking about when you're planning how to have a good long session especially if you're a regular at a place and you know there's a couple guys that are going to be in there a while. Mm -hmm. It's like if you, if you make a play and you show a bluff, let's say, mm -hmm. okay, and you, you're like, okay, I know that guy is going to possibly you know, pay me off when he shouldn't because he saw that bluff. We do these types of things all the time, but these are the types of things that make a big difference when you're going four or five, six hours right. against the same opponents, which is to be strategizing long range yes. based on what already happened, like how to exploit that in the future. Another thing to plan in advance is how the session's going to end. Yes. Especially if you're stuck. But let's just say you've been playing eight hours mm -hmm. and you're stuck three buy-ins and you're going to be quitting in half an hour. Right. You want to plan in advance that you're going to play really tight and snug. You're going to accept your loss. Right. And move on. This is really a critical part of playing good long sessions. Yes. Is how well you finish. I was just watching one of Jamin Burton's vlogs mm -hmm. and he stacked a guy who had his chips in the rack. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so that can happen. Yeah. But the point is, is that you just play the hands that you're going to play and you don't, as Tommy says, just decide, oh, I'm going to get unstuck 150 blinds in the last 20 minutes. Right. It's probably right. not going to happen, so don't no. try to force it to happen. You know, I have to say, Tommy, I really enjoy playing poker. Mm -hmm. And so if I can do a nice long session, and for me, a long session is, let's say, six or eight hours. Okay. It feels really good to be able to do that. Mm -hmm. And so these things that we've been talking about, the good prep with the diet and the exercise and the sleep beforehand, mm -hmm. the little mini resets with the, the deep breathing and everything mm -hmm. at the table, and then the couple of hours resets getting outside. Yep. All that just enables me to mm -hmm. play a good long session, feel yeah. good about the results, and not right. feel like, oh man, I should have left three hours ago because okay. I completely lost the plot uh -huh. at hour five. Yeah. So it's really good. Down below, when you click the like and subscribe button, leave a comment and tell us about your long sessions. The ones that you did well, the ones that you wish you could have done a little uh -huh. better. Yeah, or any pointers you have. Right, yes, yeah. any suggestions you have for yeah. playing long sessions. Thank you a lot, and we'll see you next week. I tried to get him to go to bed, but he won't let go. I know, and nobody can make it. <laughs> Why, just in time. Pull up a chair. Doc, been hitting awful hard, haven't you? Nonsense. I've not yet begun to defile myself. <laughs>